I heard him come back. I heard. I hear yeah, beer. Yeah, my wife. My my wife's up late. Making baby food. So. Well, there you go. But I'm just going to say this real quick, though, to Commodore. Uh, Sony has to make it. Uh, has to make a PS4 now. I mean, there's. And, and I honestly think it's too early, but I hear what you're saying. They don't really have a choice. Uh, let's go on uh, uh, okay. Um, interesting story. We probably won't go off on as long. But, uh, and, uh, I've, I've read about this on other people's blogs, one of which, uh, we hope they start doing, we hope, um, Open Byte starts doing stuff again, too. Uh, but, um, basically, apparently, at least if you live in France, you can get your money back from Microsoft if your OEM makes you buy Windows. <laughs> What happened here was this person bought a Lenovo computer and they didn't want Windows, didn't need Windows, so they, you know, installed something else on the computer and they said, okay, here's Windows, just, just take the key back and give me my money back. And Lenovo kind of chuckled and said, uh, well, ready to use it or not, you, you've bought Windows. I don't want Windows, take it back. So, you know, they went everywhere, they tried to get Microsoft to get them money, they tried to get Lenovo back. They filed a lawsuit. <laughs> the judge agreed. <laughs> now, they were asking for, like, uh, basically the cost of retail windows, which came out to be almost uh, uh, around 500 euro. But why retail? Why uh, not the OEM version? Uh, yeah, 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 well, but we don't know exact pricing and stuff. And again, the court said, okay, no, 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 no. You cannot have the full retail price because that would be like 90% of the price of the computer. Yeah, because, and also you can't move, um, uh, you know, the licenses around. Uh, well, you're not supposed to, but we know people who tried. Uh, but they but they didn't want it at all. And they, and they were trying to, you know, get the key voided, you know, or at least not allowed to them or whatever. So that was, clearly wasn't the issue here. But basically, they got 10% of the cost of the system, which worked out to be about a, uh, it was like, uh, wait, it was 25% the cost of the system, which worked out to be 160 buck refund in terms of U.S. dollars. I'm like, you know what? We in the U.S. should start doing this. All of those people who are forced to buy Windows that we never effing use, you know, we just take it and... get a laptop and... Yeah, and we stick Linux on it because that's a better OS. <laughs> it's like, uh, it, I, I don't know if U.S. law would allow for this like uh, the law in France did. I find this hysterical because, uh, I, like I said, 160 of this reward was for the uh, the amount for the Windows license, but with all the legal fees and everything, you know, basically Lenovo had to pay more than the total price of the computer because they had to pay for the lawyer and everything else to give the partial refund. And everything. I'm like, wow. <laughs> in case we're, like this part in America or, or, or like the French, they, they just have the ball to do it. I don't think it would fly in the United States. The, the, the European Union has very different laws and, and uh, competitive laws, as a matter of fact, and they have a lot more uh, covering things that we would call antitrust. And, yeah, the, the EU just, really does not like its its companies at all. <laughs> never tag Apple, of course. <laughs> no, they did. Um, Apple's been under, under investigation a couple times under, with the EU. Mm -hmm. Huh. No, no, yeah, like half the Mac versus PC ads, Apple was not, lo by law, was forbidden to show them in the European Union. And they were stupid things, like they were just implying stuff. They weren't actually saying. Say that again? The first original ads, I remember them. They were British guys. No, it was the things they were showing, like where they where they showed on screen and clicking stuff, and they'd like accelerated the footage for the point of putting something that takes 15 minutes in a 30 second commercial. You know, they weren't trying to be deceptive, but the EU said, uh-uh, no way in hell are you showing that over here. You're implying that takes 30 seconds. That takes 15 minutes. You can't show that. <laughs> they're that asinine over there. <laughs> it's almost very bad for Apple. Yeah. They're yeah. yeah. it's, it's really very bad for Apple at this point in the regulatory system because they have and the, 
all, compounded with that, they have a fan base that uh, like of old guys like myself who haven't. If they have not defected, it kind of like I have. Then, then you know, I'm assuming they're still very much a diehard Apple fan. It's the dark side. Right. I mean, I mean, in other words, anything they do that are very resentful of the desktop wars, and so it's kind of like you read these. These, these pundits that have this animosity, even though they'll, they deny it, that, oh, it's great that Apple's doing well. So Apple's in this position now that they're the old Microsoft, they're the ones with the target, and if anything happens, it's news spreads rapidly, and they have now so much more to lose because they're the ones on top. And it, it's, it's going to be a, a, a bad... Uh, fall yeah, down the hill. It, yeah <laughs> it's really funny. In spite of all of that, uh, Microsoft is still hated more, and it's you know. I've seen this like stupid thing on YouTube where they have a fake video of an iPad hologram. It's like, okay, why do people think Apple's so freaking futuristic and they have a hologram on it? It's like, who would think of putting like, why do they? Why do people think of making? Oh, Apple's futuristic. We should make a fake hologram video on on, on an iPad. Yeah. When the ASU transfer prime kicks the shit out of the iPad. Nice. You know. Well, let's go back. Let's go back to to the. the the old days of the desktop wars. Windows actually became popular. It was fashionable. You don't have Windows? What's wrong with you? Yeah. Now, Microsoft screwed that all up. Oh, big kind of, time. Yeah. No, no, and honestly, that was why I went to Windows way, way, way back in the day there because it was honestly, it, it, I know this sounds crazy to people today, but back in the late 80s, early 90s, it, and this is crazy, this is crazy talk today, but in the late 80s, early 90s, Windows had a shitload of features and functionality that its competition didn't have. You know, and it really started to click with Windows 2.0. It came to a head with 3.0 and really was great with Windows 95. Then Microsoft started to kind of get a little full of itself. And that's, but it, no, there. Yeah. Windows was so cool that the blue screen of death that occurred even in front of Bill Gates when he tried to uh, introduce plug and play. Yes! Was just the echo. echo. I'm hearing echo. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, it was probably because I yelled, but he, he was talking about the blue screen. That, do do y'all remember that at the Microsoft launch? Well, like they're they're introducing plug and play. Yeah, they plug, play. yeah, they plug in a scanner and it crashes Windows. And Windows was so popular, so cool. It, it was like a Steve Jobs moment when when something doesn't yeah. go right for Steve Jobs at an Apple event, and everybody just kind of chuckles rather than booing and going ooh. When everybody just kind of chuckled, like they were because Windows had crashed and had a blue screen of death. They're like, oh. It's a, oh Oh, well, you'll get it fixed, Microsoft. You'll innovate. You'll... <laughs> I mean, I'm short of, I, I, of course, Apple's had its own bugs and problems that they conveniently edit out of their of their keynotes that they've, they've had in the past. At least they haven't had an a, a OS X crash that I can remember on screen from them. But it just goes I guarantee to you, you know. if that ever happens at an Apple event, they are going to close. No, no. They are going to seal the doors, turn the Wi Fi off, and say, None of you are leaving until you sign a do not disclose. They have OS 10, they have like where the app doesn't launch or it's not working. Yeah, they have OS 10 one of the smartest things Microsoft ever did was make the stupid Xbox. Because it, it like I've said this at least a hundred times, it, it did its job. It established DirectX, you know, it... it. Yeah, Microsoft actually made, made sure, because they, they knew that's, that's how you had the NT Engine and then, and, and then the DOS Windows retail versions uh, running in parallel. Well, because DirectX... Well, let's also skip the fact that Microsoft got lucky. Well, wait a minute. They, they, Actually, I think the Xbox is Windows CE, not direct. Not no, 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 no. 
what I'm getting at is that early on, the NT the NT engine was originally going to be risk based with OpenGL, and it's become the entire professional line of Windows. That's why I gave up Apple and went to Windows early on with the first versions of, of the NT release because that's what they published. We're going to be risk based. We're going to have OpenGL and everything. Instead, Windows 95 comes out. They go with ActiveX. Yeah. That becomes a dominant line. I get stuck on Windows NT4 for the rest of, you know, seven or eight years. Well, everybody keeps going with this fun thing. And then you have gaming communities. Remember, what was it, EA that threatened Microsoft and said, how dare you go to this primitive API when OpenGL was... I think there was a couple of gaming houses that hated the move uh, to ActiveX, but yet they, they succumbed to Microsoft. And then, ironically, Microsoft then does take and go to that PowerPC platform. Uh, but I still believe they do use the ActiveX. API. Yes, they kept at, they kept ActiveX. They they will not they they have worked very hard to go out of their way to break GL compatibility. IE nine. What? You mean you kept on saying ActiveX instead of DirectX? Oh, did I? I'm sorry, DirectX. Yes, DirectX. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's okay. We forgive you, but the comment critiquers won't. I, I, I had one person, like, get on me for saying uh, LX instead. I said XL instead of LX, and it's like, oh, boy. <laughs> I know. From X, thank you, comment. Yeah, I used to write ActiveX as I'm telling you guys. ActiveX, but yeah, DirectX. No, no, I, I didn't finish my train of thought. I, I just uh, felt they, they cornered the API market. And well, much. yeah. Uh, well, they got lucky with the Xbox. I want to say 99 or 2000. It was early. It was toward... Well, well, hold on. The original Xbox was a train wreck. Oh, it, it, the, it, it was. It, it, it died horribly. But and it did... Oh, well, you, that, you know, that's what's so funny. The original Xbox was like this, what, you couldn't afford a PlayStation? <laughs> 2001 is what Wikipedia is saying. I don't know. Uh, okay, then it was... Then it was... Two, then it was 2000, I'm thinking of, whereas... Uh, uh, here's the thing y'all need to understand. For the stuff between 98 and 2001, I'm a little screwed up because I was getting... I was getting stuff before it officially came out. So, I, at the same time where there's magazines talking about hyping it, I had it. So I'm a little screwed up with, I could swear I had... It's like the same thing with when XP came out and everything else. I'm like, I could swear I was... And then I remember, oh, wait a minute, that was before it was on the market. Never mind. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> the Xbox 360 came out in 2005, by the way. Okay. Yes, I remember that adamantly because I got in a pissing match with PayPal. <laughs> so by then, Microsoft had a big linchpin from ActiveX and getting the game houses to, to write to that API starting from 1995 up. So that's a good, what, six years? Well, like I said, they got lucky. Didn't you say that OpenGL is now emulated Windows um, 7 and 8? Yeah, the Windows, um, the, the Windows, was it WDM, the Windows Desktop Manager, they have a central uh, a central command software layer first um, that decides whether it can get uh, to the hardware extraction layer or, or get acceleration. And it, yes, OpenGL is part of that engine as well as DirectX. Um, that's so OpenGL's not native on, you know, like, it's, it's, it's not really, like, pure native or is it, uh, yeah. yeah, they support it. They, they support it. It goes through the, through the WDM. So, um, but and, and there are plenty of players in the industry that still prefer OpenGL to DirectX, but because well, of the 360 phenomenon... That's, and such bad, that's such a bad war. I mean, I know. But OpenGL is definitely becoming more popular because mobile is using the, the, uh, the what is it, the E version of yes. uh, GL. So... It's I actually installed like, the OpenGL ES emulator, so, you know, but I haven't touched it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, the, I did came up with a game called Rage, and it, it's practically unplayable on the, uh, the PC, because their new Intech 5 engine uses OpenGL. Yeah, and that's the okay. thing, and I, I swear, this is like paranoia talking, but I swear this is on purpose. 
Because the, here's the thing, if OpenGL really becomes the de facto standard, that means by default we're moving into a more agnostic gaming arena, which is bad both for Microsoft and consoles. It's great for the emerging industry, but it sucks for the status quo. Right. Ah, uh, so it's good for mom and pop to make a little business here, huh? Uh, it, it, it would allow independent gaming houses to have the ability to participate on, on a more equal footing. They still wouldn't be on equal footing because of the way the industry works, but it would allow... The Brew Master the Three Kingdoms is going to be basically like the Wild Wild West. That would still take three to five years to occur, but yeah. But anyways, the, play, the Xbox 360 got lucky because Sony's PS3 it was under crap. I mean, I'm sorry. They had that thing sold at six hundred dollars. Yeah. I know, no. What? what wait, wait, wait. I remember it being six ninety nine. Well, wait a minute. Nintendo was around. Sega was still around back then, right? No, uh, no. Sega wasn't around as a console. It wasn't by two thousand one. Uh, uh, no. uh, it, 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 you could still get used Dreamcast, but Sega had all but given up. They basically they were in the process of pulling out. Officially, a few years later, but unofficially, Sega had already given up in the U.S. Uh, basically, wow. every, at, at by that point, every accessory, every expansion, everything for the Dreamcast was not even You're being right. shipped to the U.S. In 2001, so oh, speaking of Dreamcast, uh, you know, Scopus, um, I showed him a Dreamcast game that's brand spanking new. He was like, "Oh, I'm gonna pre-order this. It's only ninety-six dollars." He, you think he's an Apple fan, but he's a bigger Dreamcast fanboy than that. <laughs> well, well, and you know what was really wrong with the Dreamcast? In the U.S., it had had internet access. It was like way ahead of its time. You, you could dial in and you could do internet access. So but you, the Apple Pippin. Yeah, yeah, but you know what the problem with it was? You had to go through MSN. Yeah. It was like the only ISP you could get for it. You had to subscribe to MSN, which was... This was back in the days when AOL was king. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> so I, I, I take it that I take it that Microsoft is is is, is prepared now to have ActiveX API ready on ARM architecture, PowerPC, and x86. So yes, uh, you know because they're not gonna they're not gonna relinquish that standard. So I think. The oh no, they're gonna try and keep that. Okay. Yeah, they're they're ready. Wow, I, I, get, I, I get Microsoft credit. They, they have taken active, or, God damn it, DirectX um, from a piece of shit API that it used to be to a pretty powerful. Um, yeah. yeah, that's all this tessellation and direct compute shit. It's like, yeah. oh my god, that was pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> but uh, talking about OpenGL selling on Windows, I think that would have to do with the driver on the card um, and whether it was allowed hardware acceleration. So you have to. There's a lot of factors, unfortunately, with OpenGL. What does the driver set in there? What does the software say? Does it does it allow hardware acceleration? All kinds of uh, factors come in and come into play. Well, and, and a lot of those factors come into play depending on what you're messing with, because it gets to be a real problem when things were designed first with ActiveX in mind, and then they try and make it go OpenGL, which yeah. is yeah. And I, let's be frank, OpenGL is. An open standard. Yeah. Uh, open standards are susceptible to. Well, and, and, I mean, to put it in perspective, it's like trying to take ASP.NET and turn it into PHP or vice versa. You know, it, it's just they do the same job, kinda, but it, forget it. It's you know, it's. About learn both simultaneously. That part drives you nuts. But, you know, you can do that easily. The problem is that's double development. True, but I'm just saying. Uh, you know, they kind of tend to just pick one. Okay, where the hell did this this go? Yeah, replace that with that, you know. But um, all right, I think we've gone this tangent long enough. Hold on, I'm gonna try and get this this. So that was the only Microsoft story you had. Hang on. Yeah, we went on a huge tangent on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me try and add him back. 
Now you're going to start recording? Microsoft Office, I, I think they said they're going to release it to the iPad, didn't they? Uh, he, yeah, we're going to go into that in a minute, if I can oh, add. Where did this I this go? He yeah, off. he like fell off. I'm trying to add it back. Oh, where, oh, where is our this, this? Oh, where, oh, where can he be? Oh, he's on now. Mine says call failed. Yeah, and mine does that too. That says his name, call failed. Then his name. Wait, hey, type in the slash kick this side this and then put him back in. I, 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 I've already done that. Now I'm trying to re-add him. Oh, well. Yeah, hopefully he comes back. You know what? I, I actually hope we TV, the, the quest of getting to the TV comes back. Because that's a form factor I can accept, and we can be damned with these freaking tablets uh, being so the king of the press. Yeah, this stuff so gimmicky. You know, like, you, you spit all like, our dolls on it, and you play with it for a month, and then it collects the dust. I mean, my, my, my thing is pretty useful at, with my BlackBerry. Outside of that, outside the BlackBerry, I don't know what... I, I'm not inclined to go and just use it standalone. Okay, anyways, getting back to the Microsoft D and WAN for a moment real quick. Um, you, you go ahead and lead us on that one uh, bit, uh, why we see if this, this comes back. Yeah, I, I heard about that Office company. It, it, here's the thing. Do we really... I don't think that you, I mean, I've messed around with Office and the ribbon and touch and it just, it, it, it it's not as user friendly as you would like, you know. What is it mobile version of? Like, do they have the ribbon in the mobile version? Um... I I don't know, I'm used to the ribbon now at this point because I've been using it, you know, since, what, Office 2000? No, no, that's not what I mean. I mean, it's fine on the desktop. On on, on the slates, it, 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 it's... I know why they're doing that because they're going to be needing a version for Windows 8, but it's one of those things that's... I, I don't know. And... and it, it, it you know it kind of reminds me of the 80s. I swear we're in the 80s 2.0 because Microsoft still makes more money... I... Th I, I uh, I don't know if they still make more money off of selling uh, Word, but I've, I've looked at the latest Word pricing. I almost think they do. <laughs> you know, it, it's. Uh. You know, I, I will say that there's like this idiotic article. They were totally Apple purists that were saying, "Oh, you know, Microsoft just is just not good at all because it, it had to do with Office coming to the iPad and all this." They're saying, yeah, it was it was believed that Microsoft was needed to get things done. And guess what? We don't need them to get things done because things are getting done. I just wanted to so bad jump into that conversation when I was reading this article because it was between a guy and his wife on a, 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 a car ride where they were discussing it. I don't know, I've them in the back seat and just called them both idiots and said, really? You're getting work done with the iPad? I'd like to see that. You know? Yeah, you're getting work done. I, Really, you're going to sit there and type everything out on that piece of shit keyboard, virtual keyboard, do all your little crap and say you're getting work done? You must not have, you must not know the definition of work at that point. You cannot do work on that damn. You can do little superficial things and little things on the go. That is it. Work is not getting done on tablets. Games are getting, games are getting done on tablets. Yeah, it's like that, that, it's like the old argument with the PC people. Like, all you PC people, all you do is play games. And I'm tired of these little. Oh, but Mr. Pitt, American Airlines is adopting the iPad for their flight manuals. Yes, it's a book. You're telling me. I, I, as a matter of fact, I think American Airlines is an idiot to pay five hundred dollars just to do that when they could have gotten a two hundred dollar tablet to just look at pages for them. Regardless, I mean, it's insane. I mean, who was the person that did that? You, this is like a called paper. Yeah, I know. It's like, okay, you want to save fuel? Fine. I get that. You want to you want to have all your manuals electronic? There are a lot cheaper tablets that will sit there on your little flight shelf that, that you can access that don't cost five to six hundred damn dollars. I mean, what the hell? I had one for a while. There we go. It's like <laughs> we, we were just going off on Office for iPads. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, my internet just disconnected and I was talking to nobody. I was like, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden, boop, I wasn't getting anywhere. <laughs> I I I I I don't know. I I, I, I mean, we, we'll see. It, it, it's I, I mean I haven't seen a price for it yet, and that's what it. I mean, well, is I it, think you've worked out on crappy netbooks on a freaking tablet. You know what? Yeah, we've gotten back into. We're, all right, I brought up the story about Microsoft Office coming to iOS, and that's basically. All right, I read this article that uh, let me try to let me try to find it real quick and and uh, oh, it's about like some drunk would draw a line in the sand. Do you think they're actually going to try to make it? Say again. Do you think Microsoft's going to draw a line in the sand, or do you think it's like no, this thing is not a work platform. You can't do get work done. Well, no, it. Microsoft actually has right. I I mean, all right. There's two arguments at work when I argue against tablets. One is that. The iOS way frustrates me more than anything. Android has a lot of the feature rich that you want to do, but the way it's executed is is, is poor in my in, in, in my opinion. Um, but Microsoft's vision is saying, why should you be limited in power? And here's a full blown OS on all the things. And now Android is trying to say the same thing. It's just they don't have a, a desktop backend to give that. The, the, the continuation of something where you're used to being doing your work on something, right? So yeah, now that WebOS has an advantage. You know, now that WebOS is open source, why isn't there any uh, WebOS clones? You know, there well, isn't the going. Start. Okay, first off, we're not even going to start to see the first run of WebOS devices until uh, fourth quarter this year, into second quarter next year, because it, it they haven't even figured out which licensing they're going. It's like yes, it's going to go open source. It's going to sign. You do not just go okay, bam, slap it in, throw the device, go to market. I'm, I'm sorry, we're a year off plus from that happening. Yeah, Enyo's got to Enyo's got to basically come out and um, they've this is the whole development platform. Plus, they're going to be changing the underpinnings of the of the Linux kernel to be compatible with Android. So when that happens, then all that means all the drivers will change because WebOS was made kernel specific. And once that changes, then the vendors like Samsung and everybody else will be uh, probably happy to, to take it. And, and I think Android then has a problem uh, at that point, possibly. So. Well, no, just because Android's doing good now doesn't mean they're going to keep doing well. It no, will be. Android's slowly killing the iPhone, iOS. Well, I don't know. They, Apple's got. We have to see first. Look, I'm the first one to say that I I can't stand iOS. But you, Apple, you know, it would be interesting if it winds up being Android versus WebOS in the long run. That would be hysterical. Yes, it would be. Oh, oh uh, by the way, I sent you a link on the graph. Yeah, I, I no. saw that. Uh, it's um, yeah, the, the, it, it's guesstimated that Android has topped the fifty percent mark. It's and, although uh, some uh, Apple purists, I'm sure, will disagree with this. Yeah, here's the article that I'm gonna I'm gonna the put in the show notes. Fan, uh, Windows fanboy disagree with this too. I mean, What's look that? out for Microsoft. Well, here's the thing. I agree fully that this is what Microsoft is in this arena right now because they have a very small presence right now. I'm not sure it's gonna stay that way with Windows 8 launching. You know, but can we can we put something very clear that Apple actually makes a hundred dollars easy more than any other phone sold because the vendors are artificially subsidizing the Apple. Exactly, exactly. They automatically for free. I mean, if I were, a, I mean, Sprint, we don't even know if they're ever going to make a profit from the amount of money they paid to be able to get the iPhone. So the iPhone automatically gets an automatic one hundred subsidy from U.S. vendors out of the gate. So think about how many iPhone models they sell and then times that 100, and there you go, all the extra 100, you know, what in the millions. And don't think about the patents. You know, they're not being sued by Microsoft, you know. If, if, if once there's enough to compete and give alternatives to iOS, it's going to be a drastic fall. Now, I'm not one to say that I, I don't like zero-sum games. I don't yeah, now here, here's the thing that's going to... Here's honestly what I see determining the future of WebOS, okay? Uh, with WebOS, is Hewlett-Packard 
going to step in with the patents. Because here's something that could make WebOS just fly off the shelves and make third parties love WebOS to death. And that's going to be, you mean we can get rid of the tax we're paying to Microsoft for something they didn't make and making their competition their most profitable product? Because that is effectively what Android is for Microsoft right now. Android's not suffering from that. Really. No, no, Android's not suffering from that, but just the opportunity cost of dropping Android and supporting WebOS, more yeah. profit, less bullshit. Yeah, WebOS well, can be a very big threat, and it, and it seems that Whitman is targeting Android. And yes. All the press conferences that she's made, she's targeting Android. Yeah, yeah, she's like, we're the other Android, and by the way, we have protection against Microsoft. Yeah. It's like, and WebOS? <laughs> I'm sorry, it puts to shame Android and its operating system. To me, that, that's, WebOS is how it's done. I mean, that's it. I can't yeah. wait for the media yeah. to run from WebOS from a tablet. Ooh, that'd be great. Man. Uh, uh, let's, let's get back on point to the, our original thing. Microsoft Office on iOS. And this is that's not our original point, but that's what we're on now. <laughs> yeah, no, because this, this is the kind of frustrating thing that pisses me off. This is the, this is the, the, the conversation I was telling you about this, I guess you were you had dropped off uh, for this, but it basically they're, these are Apple purists that say, oh, Microsoft, their underlying message is that Microsoft is totally irrelevant, and they were always trying to say that you never needed a Windows to get things done. And, and, and see, his wife, this guy's wife, is trying to say that um, she says, in, the, in fact, many, many, my many years of Mac consulting was proof this to my clients. Microsoft Office was a must-have, no matter how much I tried to convince them otherwise. And I tried very hard for a while before even I just finally gave up. If a client told, told me they had to have it, I just nodded along and told them what to get it and where. Right? So she's, try, she's trying to say that work. Microsoft Office has the mentality, the mind share, that that's how you get work done. Well, I hate to break it to her. The Mac really didn't have, and I was on the Mac, as powerful... Uh, an office suite as Microsoft did. The only really competing uh, entity that of uh, a word processor that had a monopoly for a little bit was Word, word Perfect, Perfect, which was an illegal mindset. I don't know what this chick was on. I don't know if they're smoking crack in their car having this conversation. Or what. Uh, honestly, I have wondered that for a long time. If Word Perfect is going to release a cross-platform version of the latest version of Word Perfect, because that's one of the ways in which Word Perfect could kick ass right now by supporting Unix and Linux right. uh, and, and helping reestablish them, because Word Perfect is a great yeah. application. It, it's my, it basically if you need more than LibreOffice, if LibreOffice doesn't just quite get you there, because there are some things Libre doesn't do. Word Perfect is a great little application. Well, they tried the latest update of LibreOffice. It's actually pretty good. No, no, it, it basically, it's just, uh, there's a couple of things legally LibreOffice cannot do because they violate patents. And the only two companies that can do those things because of patent law being what it is today are Microsoft and WordPerfect. Yeah. Now, now let me add this. Uh, Microsoft was found to be a monopoly over their office program. Yeah, wow. one of the things anyways. Now, but, let me yeah. see this. Now, this this article is with their age. Because people can people can argue they're going to come back at me, and, I, and I'm going to bring it up possibly what I think people's arguments will be. Well, yes, before Microsoft Office, Lotus Notes. <laughs> I remember Lotus! <laughs> yes, that was the dominant work, workforce uh, operating uh, office suite. But this lady, if this is the guy's wife, shows her age. Obviously, she doesn't remember Lotus Notes because back then, Lotus Notes was king. And believe me, I used to work with Domino and all that stuff. And, and the Lotus argument was all about relational databases and why are you doing Microsoft's version, it's crap and all that. Believe me, I lived those years. And then Microsoft Office dominated and killed Lotus as, 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 as the dominant office suite. So, those of you that want to argue against me, this article shows its age because if they lived with... If she's in the age, this guy's wife, where people were demanding office, Lotus Notes has already died. As the well, it, it, but see, what you're getting in there, that's the nature of this whole industry. Somebody comes in, 
becomes the de facto standard, everybody thinks they need the de facto standard, then this little upstart comes in and goes, well look at all these things I do that the de facto standard doesn't do. Look at, all, look at how much less I am to operate. Look how much I am better for your bottom dollar and your productivity and everything else. And it takes a while, sometimes a decade plus, but eventually they chink and they chink and they chink and they break the you need this mindset and then the de facto goes away and a new de facto comes in and takes its place until somebody else repeats the process. Uh -huh. Well, my, my major grievance with this, his wife's perspective is that she's trying to say that mobile operating systems are getting work done. I, I adamantly disagree. Beyond having fun and consumptive needs, well, oh, 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 okay. Damage. Here's the thing, and, but, and, and but, I and I hate to go back to the physics definition of work, but the reality is, for the average end user, getting oh, no. work done See, I'm not is. Do that. When you go to work, when you go to work in all the places I've been, the users are really dumb. I mean, in terms of what we would say as geeks and knowing the innards and all that stuff, but I guarantee you, they know all the macros, the spreadsheets, and they all turn that their spreadsheet. And, and they know more about all those little micro applications than I could ever possibly want to know. And they even make me look bad. They've got all those things and they'll go, oh, it's broken. My, my little routine is not working here. And remember when you and I, yours and I, when we had our discussion, when we were discuss, uh, basically stating, hey, users are not as stupid as, as like people that in, uh, at Apple or anybody else would like to argue. No, they're, just, ig stupid. they're just ignorant. They're not stupid. Big difference. Uh, well, once they, yes, right. Once they get to know a software and they get good at it, they start making requests and saying, "Can it do this? Can it do this? Can it do this?" Because once they've mastered it, especially in a work environment, not a, not in a luxury environment, but a work environment, they the speed and performance and doing stuff to make their work get done faster is demanded. Oh yeah. Well, this is one of the reasons I'm a big fan of both open source and open core, because at worst case scenario, if that functionality isn't built in, it can be added. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always said that the Apple route to me has the biggest hurdles to overcome, because if, if mobile platforms are truly going to become this dominant UI... Apple isn't ready for it. Exactly. They're going to have to add all the complexity back into iOS because you're not going to sell me on an argument that you're going to sell an iOS-like system in its current form without concurrency and everything else um, and the complexities in it that would essentially diminish its, 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 its lore to some people that like its quote-unquote simplicity. I, I, we covered this in, uh, in Grumpy Text. I, I swear if that bridge comes... Apple is going to basically have to pull what Microsoft's doing now with Windows 8, and they're just going to have to say, I iOS devices now run OS 10 and screw everything we broke. It just screw everything we broke. Hey, they're going to have to meet the demands of production. Luxury is a very easy thing to satisfy. Production's a very different thing because let me tell you, I've worked mo all of my computer life trying to satisfy the work environment. I've been very little in, in, in luxury and, and selling. Things. Yeah, you know, it's bubblegum. Yeah, bubblegum, what I call bubblegum. And, and I can tell you that users get very intelligent with software. They learn the ins and outs, and, and they're like these masterful machines that know everything there is to know. And as soon as you change it, all hell breaks loose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you moved my widgie. What's a widgie? <laughs> I think that was a law firm. They just now got off of XP for freaking crying out loud. And everybody's bitching. And, and, and because now they have to get back all of the, the efficiencies they built in. You, you know what? I, on that note, I do want to know what my... Wh who, I want this Microsoft salesperson working for me that managed to do this. Because I've noticed across the country, a lot of law firms have like switched from WordPerfect to Microsoft Word. Yeah. I, I, I know, but I don't know one person in one of these law firms that is not bitching endlessly about it. Like a little Microsoft rep sitting and goes, okay, we have this new feature for you you're going to love. And they're all sitting there grumbling on their tongue. Yes, that's called Word Perfect. We had that before you assholes came in here. That's right. <laughs> my, my mother is one of them that loved Word Perfect. Then she actually started to like Microsoft Word when she got used to it. But let me tell you, for years... She mm -hmm. wished she could go back to WordPerfect. As a matter of fact, I bought um, for her as a present WordPerfect to go on her Mac. Um, this, was, this was years ago. Now she doesn't even use it. Now it's just she's got Microsoft Word on her Mac. But Microsoft 
successfully dominated Lotus and dominated Word Perfect and became, yes, contrary to what this woman, this this guy's wife is saying, that my, because what does she say here? She goes, like the certain finally uh, falling from the Wizard of Oz to just to, to find just a small, frail man pretending to be a far more powerful and relevant than he really was. Microsoft's biggest miss was allowing the world to finally see the truth behind the big lie. They were not... Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Yeah, you can... T this life of his as a total... That is a total vengeance lie. I, I understand that. She, she couldn't stand it. Just yeah, like I you know what, Ben? As somebody in the Apple camp, what is it about people in the Apple camp that they feel they need to sit up on? I mean, this happens to people in the winner's camp, too. They, they feel they have to, like, tailor the other guy down to win or something. It's like, you know what? Nobody's perfect. It's like... I mean, it, that is such a... It, I mean, it tell, it's a very telling line in this paragraph. Um, That was always a fun experience. Yeah. And, and it was a lot of print shops. And I can't tell you how many people. Now, they, they loved it that I was that, that, I, that I was a Mac guy. And they kind of snickered that I was a Windows guy. But they kind of accepted it. But we're talking about people who had the old Apple rainbow tattoos on their arms and shit. <laughs> and, and, like, coffee mugs. I shit you not. I mean, that was, that was how it was. They were... They loved, it was like you were the underdog to, it's kind of like, I guess, the Linux battle against FUD. The, the diehard devotion to something and, and removing the big tyrant. And I get that. But. The sense of the man mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once that's done, don't become the man at that point. Oh, no, but see, that's, the, that's what I have to, and we're going to get into this more in the next part, because I have to laugh at the fact that, you know, Apple started by fighting the big, bad IBM, and now they are striving, fighting, and demanding to be Big Brother. <laughs>